Friday morning in Oxford. Another busy day lies ahead for the world's oldest university museum and home to the University of Oxford's outstanding collection of art and archaeology. More than a million people from across the globe will visit the Ashmolean this year, making it one of the most popular cultural destinations in the whole of Europe. The desire to be welcoming is something that's written into the very DNA of the Ashmolean. This place has always been for the public, for students, for all of us. And as a result, it's an institution with a very open heart. And I remember first coming here when I was studying ancient and modern history at St Hilda's College and walking into this beautiful neoclassical building and immediately being hooked because it seemed to me that here you could jigsaw puzzle together the whole story of human civilization. It was the beginning of a love affair with the museum that's lasted up until today. As a historian and writer, I often come here to be inspired and enthralled by the Ashmolean's collections. Spend a day here and you travel the world through 8,000 years of time. This is one of my favourite objects in the museum. It's a pot from the Minoan Palace of Knossos on Crete, uh, which is of course the legendary home to the Minotaur, the creature who was thought to be half man, half bull, and was eventually killed by the hero Theseus. I love the way that the octopus sprawls around the edges of the pot because it reminds us that Minoan Crete was a very powerful maritime empire. And those little dots that you can see in between the tentacles were actually Murex sea snails. Uh, they were harvested to produce purple dye for the luxury end of the Bronze Age market. It's fantastic, isn't it, to think that this thing started off life back in prehistory on an island that had connections to three continents, Europe, Asia and Africa, and now it's ended up here in the Ashmolean. The collections of the Ashmolean are truly astonishing. All the great civilizations of the world are represented in the collections here. We have the greatest collection of Egyptian pre-dynastic material here outside Cairo. The greatest collection of Raphael drawings in the world, which you might expect perhaps to find in Rome or in Paris, are here in Oxford. And here we are in the great Renaissance gallery, surrounded by great Italian masterpieces. Paintings by Uccello, by Tintoretto, by Titian, a head of Michelangelo just down there. Wonderful objects which makes this one of the great, great world museums. But what's really special about the Ashmolean is not just the quality of the collections, but also the magnificent way in which they're displayed. In this stunning new wing, built as part of a major redevelopment in 2009, civilizations speak to one another in a way that's never been seen before. So, 5th century Greece is just across the way from 5th century India, 13th century Africa from 13th century China. In real historical terms, these civilizations did communicate with one another. So, it's just fantastic to see those conversations being kept up by the artifacts here today. You can just see different things and similarities and differences between them and you wouldn't make that link if they hadn't have done that. There are over a million objects in the Ashmolean's collection. Only a small fraction are on display, but anyone with an interest is welcome to come behind the scenes to a study room like this and ask to see a particular object. This afternoon, a group of history students are investigating Greek coins with the Ashmolean's curator, Henry Kim. As a part of Oxford University, the Ashmolean is at the forefront of research and teaching, encouraging students from all walks of life to better understand the world around them. My favourite thing about the Ashmolean is the fact that we as curators and lecturers teach straight from the objects. It's a rare opportunity for students and it really does add to the value of their studies. It's really useful as a method of teaching. It's much more tactile, much more hands-on, and so you, you end up remembering it for much longer. For its younger scholars, the Ashmolean's education department offers an exciting programme of school tours, family activities, and museum trails. 
I like doing the hunt thing where you have that sheet of paper and you go looking for different things and ticking them off. I like doing that. Well, we went and we handled some Egyptian objects and we liked the ostrich egg a lot. The cultural experience cannot be complete without a place for visitors to sit and reflect upon their time in the museum. And the Ashmolean has two, a fine rooftop restaurant and a popular cafe where visitors can refresh themselves over a lunch or a cup of tea. Then, once revitalised, visitors may like to finish their day by attending one of the many talks or events hosted by the Ashmolean every week. This evening, the Countess of Carnarvon is giving a talk about her ancestors' role in the discovery of the tomb of Tutankhamun. I think the Ashmolean is a wonderful museum, and I think what they've done with it and with the new galleries they've created, it's a huge success. And lots of little things to see without being too pressurised. And then, and then I like the tea and coffee downstairs as well. This has been a time of great change, great and exciting change in the Ashmolean, and there's always something new happening here. New acquisitions, new temporary exhibitions, wonderful run of temporary exhibitions. If you haven't been for a long time, please come and visit us soon. The Ashmolean Museum is closing for the day, but coming here reminds me again what a vital and unique role this place has to play. We are creatures of a shared communal memory. As a species, we survive by communicating and by learning from one another. And that's why we preserve all of this. Not so that we can live in the past, but so that we can learn from it and look forward together, confidently, to a shared future. The new Ashmole Museum is a shining incarnation of that certainty, of that human hope, and that is why it is so precious. It reminds us to remember to think better. It also reminds us, as the poet Wordsworth put it, that although humanity has many faces across both time and space, we all of us share one human heart.